it is i think an endorsement uh, uh, of of uh, uh, ratification of the presidential election result and it strengthens the hand of the president considerably especially since uh, the uh, the jvp element has been factored out out of this result it's not contesting with the upfa cannot threaten to pull out and so on so that that is the most significant thing that we have to say about it strengthens the hand of the president and uh, gives political stability that that we have achieved uh, as a, as a nation that that is what seems to have come out uh, what that will be used for is a different matter but uh, the international community should recognize at this point that uh, the people are behind the president uh, for for good or bad you know that 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 is what the electorate has said but Marlinda, also when it comes to the voter turnout, it's, suppo it's supposed to be, I think, 50 to 55 percent out of 14 yes. million voters. Mm -hmm. So why was it such a low voter turnout and doesn't that have implications on the result? The, the, there is also, uh, the low vote, voter turnout can be explained. Uh, one reason is that uh, there is uh, ele election fatigue. We've had too many elections and we've had a very hard fought uh, presidential election where all the issues were thrashed out. So this was uh, an issueless election. It was an election uh, where the focus is on who was going, which candidates were going to get thrown out, which were going to get elected, who were going to get elected. And not so much about policies and things like that, but that had already been decided in January, on January 26th. And uh, there was also on the part of the opposition, demoralization, natural demoralization. And uh, so the we saw this in 1989 after the presidential election when you have the general election uh, the there was less enthusiasm on the part of the opposition so that is indicated and also the uh, the opposition school of thought was that the elections were also not conducted in a fair manner they were also not referring to a particular uh, day that is the day of the elections but it was a whole process and uh, there were lawyers also who said that it's also because the 17th amendment was not in place and also uh, there was a lot of cynicism on the part of the public because they felt that there is always unnecessary intervention from the government this is what actually the Secretary of the UNP also said. Well, at the uh, 17th, I mean, I think Rohan Idris Singh said this, exactly. uh, and uh, this is partly true that uh, you know, we don't have a perfect uh, system of electing people. We don't have perfect elections. But uh, the validity of the result is not uh, drastically compromised by this because uh, you can compare it with uh, the kind of uh, intervention by the state, uh, by the government. Uh, and abuse of state resources in previous elections and uh, the ability to uh, for example impersonate voters and, and rigging on, on election day uh, those things uh, have been sorted out for to a large extent uh, over the last few years and uh, in terms of election violence there was one death and that was of a UPFA uh, supporter uh, and which is very much less the incidence of violence very much less compared to other general elections and it has been mostly intra-party rivalry that has produced the violence, not not you know uh, elephants uh, fighting with uh, you know bulat kole and things like that. Uh, so there is an element of truth in the fact that we don't have a perfect election, but whether the result, uh, whether you know if if we had a perfect 17th amendment, it's flawed. But if we had a perfect 17th amendment, whether the UNP would have won, that is ridiculous to say. Uh, it might have made a small change in terms of whether it is 67 percent or 65 percent or something like that, but uh, that's speculation. But I, that that's a reasonable uh, kind of projection. Uh, not to that does not take should not take away from the fact that the UPF has been uh, voted in by the by the majority of the people. And Malinda, you referred to the JVP and the Sarat Fonseca factor. Mm -hmm. Why did they fare as they did actually? Why, what is the uh, your analysis on that? I, I think that uh, the true strength of the JVP was highly exaggerated by the 2004 result where they fed on the UPFA or the SLFP votes. Now, hash one by one hash Mobitel Smart Recharge Bonanza of the of the UPFA because uh, uh, of, of the JVP because they are contesting separately, you know, but even that is slightly suppressed by the Sarat Fonseca factor. The Sarat Fonseca people like Arjun and are, are, are with them, so that brings in a certain number of votes. But when you are forty 
and you come down to 4 or 5 or maybe even less, we still don't know, uh, especially after being 17 on your own in 2001. 2000, in the year 2000, they were 10, they had 10 MPs and 1994 they had one. So that is a big calm down. Maybe, you know, it's a huge uh, disappointment for the JVP, it should be read like that and uh, they have to reassess their political strategy at this point. And also when you look at the presidential election in January and uh, the results that we got, it's the same trend that we are following now. And also if you look at the 2004 presidential election, do you want to do a comparison between the yes, two? Yes, two, uh, 2005 presidential election. Uh, 2004 uh, parliamentary president, election. Yeah, pa now, now, parliamentary yeah, election. Now Jan between January and now we have seen the natural uh, you know, swing towards the victor that is there. And this is a good uh, moment for General Sarat Fonseca, retired General Sarat Fonseca, to assess his political worth. Uh, he got 40 percent of the vote uh, in January, but now with the JVP, they are getting consistently about between 3 to 7 percent of, of the vote from each electorate that we see, the results uh, that have come out. So, he has to understand that people voted with the, fact, uh, with the UNP, not necessarily for him, but because the UNP backed him. And you take that out, and that's the true worth of Sarat Fonseca with the JVP, without the UNP. So that will give an indication of the true support he has and the true strength he has. Uh, in terms of the 2004 election, well, uh, as I said earlier, that was a larger coalition in the sense that the JVP was part of the UPF. This time the JVP is without. And that indicates uh, how much stronger the SLFP forces have become over the uh, over the past uh, six years, especially uh, the president under the president's leadership, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa's leadership. Uh, he has been able to hold the party together, and uh, the fact that some people have left has, has not uh, had any impact. In fact, uh, it has actually helped him. And also, the before the elections, the government was also asking for the two third. And again, uh, lawyers like uh, Rohan Edir Singh, he was also saying that uh, some educated um, advocates advocating for two thirds for the stability of the part, it, uh, pa uh, parliament to change the constitution is almost nonsense. Because what he said was, you don't need a uh, two thirds, but what you need is a reasonable um, majority, and you can go for a constitutional assembly that will actually uh, reform the constitution with more stakeholder participation. What is your take on that? I think that, uh, you know, when someone says educated people, that is uh, a reflection of, se of self-image uh, and it's uh, kind of saying people are stupid. Uh, but see, t he, Rohan and you know, others, they are right in that two-thirds gives so much power, can be abused, can, I mean, depends on what you use it for. And we don't know about politicians. That, that is true. But why should anyone vote well, well, the, the way people vote? Uh, I, I would vote for a party. I'm not voting for a, uh, the party to get two-thirds. I'm voting because I prefer this party to that party or, or a certain other number of parties. So I pick a party, then I pick the kind of can candidate, the kinds of candidates that I, that I want to be in parliament to represent me. So two-thirds is an outcome. We we'll live with it. We don't vote or vote against two-thirds. Now, for example, if I don't want the government to have a two-thirds majority, would I, uh, if I was, a, say, a UPFA supporter, it's the logical thing for me to do to go and vote for the UNP, whose policies I might uh, totally disagree with. That is, there may be one or two people who think like that and vote like that or, or, or stay at home. But that is not how the majority think. They are not thinking about two-thirds. They are wondering what kind, which party do I want to run this country for the next six years? So if a certain uh, amount of people think that way and vote for one particular party and that party gets a two-thirds majority, you have to live with that. You know, you can't, uh, in 1977, the U U United National Party got five, uh, five six majority under J.R. Jayavardhan. People were not thinking, uh, you know, it's not it's bad to give these people two-thirds and therefore we should not. They thought the UNP uh, set of policies presented uh, was better than that of the SLFP and more than that, uh, they were sick of uh, the, the United Front government for whatever reason, you know. So the two-thirds argument, yes, it can be abused because we need two-thirds to change the constitution, but that is, we, we don't know about it. And uh, Malindo, so what are the options for the opposition now? Yeah, this is a very serious 